today we're going to make South American ocarinas. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, ocarina is a pretty cool uh, instrument that you can make out of clay and fire and, pl and play and everything. You can buy them online. They're like a hundred bucks, all right? So I've worked it out. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, the only issues as far as I've gotten is I haven't been able to tune them correctly. So that's a hard thing because you tune them when they're rough like this. Then you fire them and they're out of tune. So I'm not sure how to get past that. You have to be off the right amount at bisque wear, so when it fires it becomes in tune. So I don't know how to do that yet. Working on it. So let's uh, get some clay and get started. So what you need is a wedge of clay. It's called a potato, a sweet potato ocarina. So you're gonna create this wedge shaped, right? And then we're gonna create this shape, solid clay. All right, so let's get down here on the table and make this sucker. All right, it's cool ocarinas. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. Notice it has two because this is supposed to be an octave or um, half quarter step on each note that you can go and cover both, come up, cover one, then lift this finger, cover both, then one, lift this finger, or something like that. Um, playing them and making them are two different things. <laughs> so, all right, so first we're gonna pound this into a nice shape. Now this one is bigger, it's much lower sounding, but it works. But the better sounding ones are the smaller ones. So the tighter you can get your fingers together, right, and the smaller you can get this, the better it's gonna be, the, the easier it's gonna be to make it make a good sound, have higher pitch sounds. Otherwise you have really airy, um, deeper sounds. You can make basically two and have a bass and a soprano or something. But um, it's too big, it doesn't work as well. Or it's just harder to make it work. So. Let's get this thing going. Pull this around. We want to round all this stuff off and get that shape. All right? Where's the clip in the middle there? Want to come to a point? A little bigger there. Try to round it. This is harder than it looks to create that shape. All right, now he's running back. At some point, you'll need some water to really smooth it out. Because you can push on it now, there's no air inside, so it won't collapse. You just keep working on it until you create the shape you want. I want this to have. Tip that's nice. Um, should be tapering smaller at that end. Uh, I have need more clay up in here. It's like going from small to big. There we go. Starting to get there. I do like it when it's round all the way across the whole thing. See that angle? Right now I'm pretty flat because I cut this block out. But we'll get there. And you can think about playing like that. We'll need a piece of clay to put here later. We'll do that after. When you're done. You kind of got the shape you want. You can also use a rib tool to take out all your pushing and finger finger marks and go around it. I'm going to kind of look at this and analyze if it's too big or not. I 
I still have a dimple down here, so I think that's going to be my bottom, right? You can see that, All right? Even though I scraped this, I still got pit, pits down in there. Um, in the end, you just have your thumbs down here, maybe an octo hole. So you want the nice curve to be on the top up here. So three notes across here and three across here, maybe four. Yeah, four here. Four here, so you're getting eight your thumb holes. Could do a thumb hole there. This one had two thumb holes. It worked when it was being made, but it doesn't work now. I think the part that blows out here is too low and blowing underneath this ridge too far, the 45 degree angle piece. All right, so this will be the bottom here. Nice and rounded. So, that'd be some time spent on the this part. This is your foundation. You always need a good solid foundation whenever you're building a house or an ocarina. Alright, then we've got to cut it in half. And I think then I hook this on, but this stays on the bottom half. And the whistle part's on the bottom. I'm thinking, what if I hook that on now? and cut off just above it so that I'm not working so hard on this thing when it's empty and loose. Um, I might try that this time. Why not? Then I can tell you whether to do it that way or not. Another piece of clay for the mouthpiece. Uh, a popsicle stick is what we're going to use to go in the mouthpiece there. Does that one fit? Oh, it almost fits in there. Good. Alright, so now we got to create a mouthpiece here. So let's see, I don't think we need so much, so let's get it to size, thickness, the bottom half, we're going to cut it down. So let's get some. I'm going to pound that at an angle and get it because that has to swoop underneath, right? We're going to the bottom of this thing. So you can see it's rocking on the corner, but we want to be flush with the bottom here, so that's pretty good there. I can round it there. Score it up, get it on good. You don't want that breaking off. Wet. That trying to be flush at the bottom here looks good. So I'm going to go like that. Okay, it's nicely rounded on there. Looks cool. Then you can also kind of feel the the angle. So. That's hard to play this way, right? It's it's nicer if it leans away from your hands, hold it this way. So now the mouth has to come to my mouth. The mouthpiece needs to be pointed more this way. See the difference? Yeah. It needs to be bent up. So now we can start to change the angle here. Let's go something like that. All right, so it goes back. You can even tap it down, get it all centered, but we're going to cut it open now. Okay. Now you need a wire cutter. Wire, a string, even if you're at home, you got a string. Right? So now we got to carve it all, empty it. So, we go right through the nose here. Slide on you. Keep it level. It's okay because you're just going to hook it all back together. And cut right down to that mouthpiece. Out the back. And then, ta da! Look at that. Two halves, about the same size. All right. So now we need to carve it all out to make the hollow chamber. 
Okay. So let's see how thick are our walls going to be, right? We want them thick enough to be strong. So, of course, the more thinner they are, the bigger chamber you're going to get, the lower sound you're going to get. So you could you could make it heavier, but carve out less, and you'll have a higher sounding ocarina, I suppose. So not just making it smaller, it's about the chamber size, not about the actual size. All right, of course you want them to match. Otherwise you'll get a big step inside there. Okay, so we do that. Then you take some loop tools. Of course, if you take a really big one and carve out huge ones, it will bend it and pull against the part that's now gonna become thin. So a little bit of it at a time actually works better. All your edge there, and you can swoop right up, take it out. All right, let's do all this. Be careful not to make a hole in the bottom. Don't go too deep. Now, when we make the hole here, we need to blow underneath a 45 degree down here. And, and I think on these other ones, a lot of the time I've ended up blowing too far out away from that 45. So I'm not gonna carve this down deep and thin here. If you're gonna leave anywhere thicker, leave it here. I might even want to. I'm gonna even put some more back in there. I think, and create this spot here that's just oh, slimy. A little thicker. All right. Then you can come in here and smooth it all out. Again, not too hard. You'll stretch it and make it not match the other side. You want them to match. smooth interior so the air can flow everywhere nicely For some reason on bells and whistles the uh, air flow matters one little spur sticking up out here will mess up the air and swirl it funny and then your whistle won't, won't work so we'll take that same principle and apply it to this more complicated ocarina and keep everything nice and smooth inside all right. Okay. I think we're good there. I got this little more clay here. I almost want to get some more in there. I'm really worried this time about getting this right. The most important area is this whistle section here. The hole, the mechanism. All right, that feels better. A little more space to work with there. And then I could blend this down. And remember, that's the bottom, so I don't have a million holes on this part. The holes are on this side, the top. Remember, this is where our holes are, so we want it really smooth down there and clean. Because you'll be making these holes in it when it's closed. And then you'll be pushing clay, will be coming out the bottom, and we're going to have to smooth it out, scrape it clean, and shake out the chunks. Okay, let's. Okay. Ooh, that's nice and thin there. <laughs> Hopefully that's good for it. I feel a little wide. Let's see, it's going to be to this side. All right. 
right, so I'm going to make this a little bigger. Now the question is, do you want to create this mechanism while you have access to it and it's clear and clean you can get on the inside and the outside, then seal it, close it. If it's big, it could collapse, right, and it's hard to puff it open again. You can clog the holes and blow into it and it'll puff it open. So I'm going to try it this way so I can get this to come out right on top of this thing right here. Typically you want this dry or else it gets all sticky in there. Okay, it looks like we need to come up. Gonna push the clay open. Oh yeah, look at this. See it's coming out right there. That's where I want it. I'm gonna bust through. Cool. I do need a clean opening here. Okay, ta-da. And it blows right there. I can push this down so it hits that. There we go. I'm right floating right above this platform. Okay. Then we want to clean this issue up here. And go in, push down, out. The littlest spur of clay in this hole here will mess it all up. Alright. So if you can get that all clean now and not every time you shove it through you could mess it up. So, and if this is dry, right there, you're going to be good. Alright, pack all the edges down. Alright, looks good. And I really don't want to have to put it through again until it dries out a little bit maybe and won't grab clay on the tip of this and get it stuck on this edge. Alright. So now, even harder part is to know where to make this 45 degree hole. Well, if you have the inside available here to you, that's why we're doing it now. You can cut a straight up and down there. That's what we need. Right there. And then we can flip it over. Wow, cover it right up, huh? There we go. So Right up and down here. Then we come over here, we know we need a 45 degree angle here. So let's go. The hole tends to grow as you work on it. So start small, sticky clay. Okay, I need bigger than that. It just sticks to itself. Of course, I added some clay there that had water in it. Wow. Sometimes it's better to work with leather hard clay. But you can't back up on that. It's harder to. All right, so we have this flat wall here. The hole's blown out there, and at the, down at the bottom down there, we're trying to create now a nice angle piece that we can smooth out. It's supposed to be 45 degrees. But sometimes that goes too. Let's. Uh, Maybe this one, try different tools, find what's going to work best. A little back and forth there. Scrape that off. Look at this dry piece of clay. Chunks messing things up. Okay, it's getting better. Clean out this. Uh, 
flip it over, and you, then you can see how it pushes down little spurs here. So now you want to get this really smooth underneath that right, that sharp edge, and then keep working that back and forth until we get a nice angle there. I like this one because it's curved, but. This one. Put it over. Also, don't like I like a sharp edge. I don't like it when it's cracked there and everything. And then it just pushes back. That edge is good. My two side walls are looking rough. Let me try to. Scrape them off, there we go. Takes a steady hand to scrape these really sharp without any little spurs sticking out. Clean your tools constantly. Go all the way up to there. Alright, I don't know if you can see the bottom of that. Pretty clean. Alright, and the inside of that hole. Often it's blurry when I do that. Alright, you can see how the hole is going to blow out right underneath this. In that little 45, it's going to build pressure and shoot the air up. And make the whistle whistle, if we're, if we're lucky. Do everything you can now. Smooth things out. Very refined level here. Okay, clean your space. Okay, now I'm going to put them together. Cross the fingers. Okay. Gonna score. Just going to blend it all together and or you don't mess it up. Line it up as best you can. And start pressing it together. I wish we could reach inside and smooth that out. Another way to do it is it might cut the back off and then you can reach in and smooth it all out and then the only part that has a bad seam would be maybe a circle back here circle in the back, a cap. And if I ever determine that that's one of the problems I'm having, is the interior is not smooth anymore now with the seam line, then I'll have to uh, come up with a scheme like that. All right, start blending it off. Try to hide your seam line. Do everything you can, don't push in the middle, always push around the edges. It'll collapse. The middle is the weak spot. Try to hide that line with some crisscrossing. But you can see this one, <laughs> it ended up cracking on it. So you can see it's important to get it to pinch together and Try to hide it. Well, that's not good. It already doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the battle begins to find out why. Give it a break. Let it rest.
we've cleaned the area, press start, and this is dried up. I can touch it, even still a little sticky. It's been uh, three hours. Hey, and it works. Well, that's good. Just needed to firm up a little bit. All right, so we wanted to hold it like this. All right, so we can put one, two, three, four holes here, five, six, seven, eight. But we can only, just like the other whistles, we can only put a hole, a, a hole in if it works. And if that works, we can put in the next hole. And if that works, we can put in the next hole. If it stops working, we're either done or we've got to work with this mechanism and make it work better. Something's not quite right. Um, hopefully, everything's right with that one. So, if I look at these, these were based off of ones of the pros I've watched online with these super long explanations. And they all pretty much the same size. These smaller ones seem to be smaller, but as you start blowing more air, I think that to get to the next note, you have to have a bigger hole, consecutively getting bigger and bigger. That's why these seem to be bigger, but these seem to be smaller. All right, so I'm gonna go with this. Look at that, that doesn't even fit in there because it fires and shrinks. So the first three, pretty small. So again, we're gonna start with one. Now let's position our fingers where we think we're gonna wanna play, right there. I'm going to go ahead and mark each one of these. There, 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 there. Let's pop this first one in. Now, I want to pull this out of there. I don't want it to fall inside, but I think it's through there. Got it. The only problem is now it's stuck in here. Something. Now let's see if that, oh shoot. Don't push on this down here. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a full note there. So what you can do is you can go in the hole and then go in a circle and shake it and stretch it bigger and bigger. And that's how you would tune it. There is another thing. I don't know. It's nice to curve this part, bevel this. So your finger has a place to rest when it goes in there, the curve of your finger here. That's kind of hard. It might work better if uh, it's dry. If I could feel that better. Okay. Now, if you really want to get serious, you can open up your music app there and see what note you got. B flat. Ooh, from B flat to halfway between B and C. really is almost a full step there. It'd be nice to get that all the way to C. Although it feels like I'm pushing it. A little bigger. Boy, the harder you blow, the more it moves up the scale. See, there's B. skips to D. Oh my gosh, that's a full step. Anyways, we'll just keep going. We're just having fun. Let's get the next one. It's twisting it. Get it in there. Pull it out. Uh-oh. Looks like I dropped it in there. This one's got garbage in there too. Make it bigger. Maybe the rounded part of the back of this stick. Oh yeah, I love that. Creates a little divot for the finger. Perfect. But it closes the hole there. Okay, let's try these notes. 
If you blow too hard and too much, you could mess up your little sharp edge down in here. And this is still moist because I had it laying down this way, I think. Let's try these two notes. Just under each note. That's good. C, D. Maybe this one will get an E. Oh, good. Got it out this time. Oh, and the plug came out. Let's see if we need to large that at all. said after the third one I'm getting air so then we got to deal with this which I did not want to have to do of course the bigger we make these the shorter the sooner that it doesn't work but I would like to lift these up to get on the note but then when you fire it it could be off so getting it all perfect now but you can't do it later so these are all pretty good size here. Those were smaller. Mm -hmm. All right, turn that off. And also, now that it's dry, if you've got a strong seam line you want to hide there, it might uh, be easier now to blend that off. Alright, I got rid of that a little bit. <sighs> now the hard part. The scary part that could ruin it. few notes you do get you know so our key tool now is this one it will let us go all the way down in there push against this wall all right it does seem to have I didn't want to have to put this through here because th as this clay shrinks it'll grab this stick too hard and you'll peel off look at that doesn't want to go in there anymore You can plow a big bunch of, uh, bunch of clay in front of it and clog it all up. Again, it looks like it's too low. If I push this down here, maybe. Let's try it. Actually feels, sounds clogged. What I just did was a problem. That was dumb. I totally plowed some clay forward in front of this tip which I was just talking about. Darn it. Ah, shoot. No, I almost got to force it through. Now it's clogged. I've done it. So I've really done it now. Just gonna have to shove it through. Oh, it's plowing whole wall out there. Big chunk of clay came out with it. Boy, that really bites. What it is is soft clay that from blowing on it, my moisture in my mouth, humidity, and it got a hold of all that soft clay inside the channel here and pushed it out. Alright. Boy, that does look like it sits comes in right to the underneath the edge there. I don't want to mess that edge up now. Where's another tool? Oh, I need a flat tool. You can uh, pick at this and play with this forever, trying to get it to work. And you'll be going back and forth between making it worse and making it better and learning what makes it better and what makes it worse. And Accidentally messing up things. I'm gonna start fresh. All right, I got that coming out of there nicely. It goes right up to that edge. If I look at that edge, it feels like a very steep wall. 
And remember, on the other whistles, it's supposed to be a 45 degree. So I may have too much of a steep wall here, and that's why I can't make the whistle anymore. As there's more, less and less air pressure, it takes more and more of an angle. Also, it's blowing, and you can see the half moon black shape in there. Where the air is blowing, but there's a, a, an area on the side there that maybe uh, should have clay. All right, so I'm going to back this out. It's nice and clean now. Oh, actually, it works. Well, that solved some of it. Let's keep going. See, just playing with it, cleaning it out. Now we're going to go for our fourth hole. Look how big that hole is. Straight down, straight down. All right, got that clog out. Make my little finger divot. Yeah, let's go through here and make it bigger. I'm curious what's happening with our sounds here. Ooh, right on D there. So we need a, a bigger hole to get us a full step to D to E. Where's my little one? This one. So let's open this up a little bit and just keep making it bigger and bigger. Ooh, close. See how this one's getting bigger. Let's try that. Bigger. Oh, this one could be a little bigger too. Now we're starting on. Oh, I don't have this closed. Oh my gosh, messing things up. seems like it needs to be a different size, bigger or smaller. Okay, that is four holes there. Then we're going to go over here. Okay, so I want my holes to be like that. Set this down, keep my fingers there. We're going to go one here, two here, three here. And if we're lucky, <laughs> we get four more out of this. Alright, so that made a sound, so I'm not going to do this double whole octave bump, but I see it does need to be bigger, that's the double. I just want to be able to get eight sounds out of this. Eight notes would be an octave, right? If you can get them full steps is the trick, you could play a song. Song, song, blue, weeping like a window. See a clay in there to clean up. It's a half a note, half a step. We talked about these having to be bigger, and it's starting to sound airy again. step a bigger bigger maybe I'll just 
just go ahead and call that good and go to the next one. <laughs> it's all going to shrink when it dries. Oh, I divoted there. is big and we're out of out of uh, air maybe that's why this one needs that double octave hole there to the uh, tempted to go and put this other small one up here which you can cover with the finger oh shoot ah jeez that one fell out now we've got a, this game here and back to this idea that I'm too, uh, too s not steep enough over here. So this is the scary part. I knew I was going to get to this if I want to try to get those last two. I'm, I'm, it looks like I'm at an angle here, but over here I'm almost straight up and down. So I'm going to try to keep this curve going around. Pull off this clay up high at first. This one has it works much steeper curve. All right. Open. We had trouble there. Didn't help much. And I know there's not a lot of problem underneath it so I'm really hesitant to reach under and touch this as the edge I know is all sticky and, and moist right now I need to dry it oh did that do something I got that clear I don't know if I can get another one though. That's pretty pretty airy. Well, that's the game, and you just keep playing it until you got them all. I'll click back on if I get them all or not, but uh, I might have to just stop there. Again, another reason to make it smaller. I'm I'm just as big as this one when it dries, and I wanted to go a third less. I wanted it to be this big. Maybe I can cut all this off and close it. <laughs> They could bring it to a point here and bring all the notes higher and it just seems to work better. All right. Finally, that's my highest note. Barely works there. But it seems to be getting better as it dries. So I think as it fires, it maybe will work. So there's the size of all my holes. I went ahead and did the octave hole, which works pretty well. I can go almost a whole note here with a, I can go whole half, whole half, whole half, whole half. And then in here it's another game. <laughs> so getting all this perfect is what makes a, a perfect ocarina in tune. And that takes some practice. All right, so one thing I also like to do is a little decoration to make it my own, right? Um, you saw in the others, maybe you saw that. I, I take a little uh, swirl line here that comes over here. I'm flying out here. Curve. Ow. <laughs> I got myself. I like to come out here. Maybe right here. Around that octave would be cool. Come to this one. Maybe I'll 
come here. All right, get a line first, and then we'll carve it out deeper. All right, so it shows up when we're glazing it. Oh my gosh. I don't want to stay in the slot. Alright, something like that, kind of fun. And I'll uh, clean it up a little more when I uh, when it's dry. And it'll sweep a little deeper. How about uh, your name, initials, or something on the bottom? Um, I'll just put my, my symbol here. This is what I put on all my projects. All right. Yeah. All right, there it is, fired and out of the kiln. Let's see if it still works or if we lost our notes. Wait. About the same amount of effort on that last note, but it works, so I'm excited. Let's get down to the table and I'll show you how to prepare it before we glaze it here in this beautiful blue. All right, so first thing, we don't want to clog or change these at all with glaze getting there, especially in the mouthpiece, and it'll be very hard to reach in there and clear it out. So we need to block all these parts up. So we're gonna take these little pieces that I prepared into little wedges, and we are gonna block so the clay cannot get in there, the glaze cannot get in there. Let's see, I made, uh, let's see, this one could go in like that. I'm gonna push it in really good. Believe me, it wants to fall out. It does not want to stick to this stuff, so you gotta be careful that it doesn't fall out and end up filling it with glaze. I'm gonna make them stick so I can just grab them and pull them out when we're done here. Okay, and it's okay if it doesn't get glazed around the edge. You can always paintbrush. Alright, let's put that in the glaze bucket. Dip it in here. Always, a, always good to uh, use some tongs so you won't... Okay, that's clear there. There we go. Alright, and two, three, boom, boom, boom. Oh. There's something plop out. Oh, I lost my clog, but it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Got too heavy. Okay, that's drying. You can see then we'll be able to pull these out. You can smear it up close to the edge while you can, or it dries. So I'm gonna do this really fast. Probably carve out my initials again so I can see it. So it doesn't get lost. Finally, the last thing I would do is knock off any chunks, check for, well, that's dirty. Check for any pieces that came inside there. See that? Messing with the size of my hole. Check that. Okay, it's all good. This is good. And our bottom is good. Nothing got in there. I'm gonna probably lose my name here if I don't recapture that. So th the thick glazes will clog it up. My initial symbol here, JD. All right, let's move that out. Cool. You can use a line writer and fill it with another color. It's gonna be fun. Oh, there was also a, a design here, wasn't there? I think we lost, it's right here.
There it is. So let's throw it in the kiln and see how it looks when it comes out. And hopefully it finally plays uh, all finished. Here we go. All right, there it is. Nice blue ocarina. All right, let's see if it still works. Oh, cover everything. Ooh, a little rough on that last note. We got all the other ones still working, so that's awesome. Hey, all right, hope you learned something from that process of making ocarina, and now you gotta learn how to play some songs. <laughs> Good luck with that, enjoy, see you next time on Mr. Dunn's Ceramic Room. I'm out.